How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the Tampa Bay Rays. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. And also, there is a poll in the pinned comment down below. Go and um, go and vote for that poll because that is going to be tomorrow's rebuild. So whoever has the most votes by you know the time I go to record tonight, that'll be the team that I go to do for tomorrow's rebuild. So another thing is you guys always ask what team I or what rosters I used for um, my rebuilds. So with that being said, I figured I'd go into the vault and show you what, you know, wh whose rosters I use. And this is what I do in the search bar right in the middle of the screen or right at the top of the screen. You can see what I type in. Um, that's what I search and I'm using the OSFM V4. It's the most recent one he has. This is the most reliable roster I can find. So that's what I use for rosters. Now let's hop into this rebuild. Alrighty, so we're going to be doing the Rays, like I said, and a team that was very, very active at the trade deadline. They traded away Chris Archer. They got some really good players in return from the Pirates. They traded away their catcher, Wilson Ramos. They traded for Tommy Pham, who in real life actually just hurt, like just broke his foot, I believe. They just released their shortstop, a Danny Echeverria, and then I th they did one more thing, and I can't remember what it is. Or did they not do anything? I can't remember, but they were really active at the deadline, and I figured they got a really good youth core. Why not give this team a try? I'm really looking forward to what we can do with this squad, and let's talk about my plans, what I want to do, and things like that. Season 1 and Season 2 are probably going to be pretty tough. This team is a team that you really want to build around the youth that they have, and they definitely do have that. So looking at the starting pitchers, oh, I want to finish my thought. Season 1 and Season 2 are probably probably going to be pretty tough. You know, second season may be a wild card spot, but third season is really where we're going to be pushing for the playoffs and the World Series. So this first season is probably just going to be the intro, talking about what we're going to do for the team. I'm going to do two trades that I already have in mind. I'm going to go to the draft and that's it. There's no trade deadline day. It's going straight through from draft day to the end of the season. Second season, we'll probably pick up another piece or two that can help us push for that wild card spot. But we're really just going to focus on developing the team that we currently have and then really push in free agency season two, maybe find a piece or make a couple trades once the season starts for season three and really push for playoffs and World Series for season three. Season three is that make or break year. So let's talk about this team a little bit. As you can see, Blake Snell, he's gonna be our ace for the foreseeable future. We got Jacob Faria, Tyler Glasnow, who came from the Pirates in the Archer deal. And then the fourth and fifth spots are really areas that I wanna improve on. We do have a lot of young talent. We have Yarborough, De Leon, Beeks, Honeywell, Banda, um, Hunter Wood, Andrew Moore, Brendan McKay, Mike Libertori, and um, Shane McClanahan. Brendan McKay can actually play first base in real life. That's a fun fact about him. And then their number one prospect in all their farm system is Brent Honeywell. So pitching wise, we're set. We have a lot of good prospects and we're looking really, really good. Relief pitching wise, we need a couple pieces. We definitely do. Um, our best one is a 73 overall player who I don't really see us using that much for the, you know, in the future. We do have Jose Alvarado, Vidal Nuno, Yoni Chirinos, and then a couple other low rated players who do have B potential, but I don't really see them developing quick enough for us to use them. So we, we're going to need some relief pitching, some bullpen help. We also have Sergio Romo, who I'm going to be looking to trade just because he is 35. So he's going to start to decrease in rating. First, or catching, once we got once the Rays got rid of Wilson Ramos, catcher is definitely a spot where we need to improve on. And I already have a player in mind. So that's my, my one trade that I'm going to do for season one. So first base, Jake Bowers set. CJ Crone, nice little backup, nothing too special. Jake Bowers is that guy for us to build around. Second base is Joey Wendell. Not a horrible player. He's got B potential. He's 27. He's 74 overall. He should develop. If he doesn't, we'll find a new second baseman. But for now, I'm cool with keeping him, seeing how it goes. Matt Duffy, same thing. B potential, high 70s already. He's 27. He should be perfectly fine until one of these other two players develop. The one I'm really keeping my eye on is Christian Arroyo. And I'm probably going to use Daniel Robertson as trade, uh, trade bait for one of the trades because he does have some value. And Christian Arroyo is younger and just is just as good um, at third base. Shortstop Willie Adamas is our shortstop. I'm going to let him develop. He's going to play in the majors as much as possible. We do have Wander Franco right behind him, who is actually 11 ratings behind him. But he's 18, he's 61, and he's got 8 potential. So he looks to be really, really good prospect for the future. 
Left field, recently acquired Tommy Pham. Looks to be our good, you know, we're good in left field. Not gonna trade him, gonna let him develop. And he actually develops pretty good in franchise. So if you need a left fielder, Tommy Pham's not a bad pickup. Center field, we got Kiermaier. He's not going anywhere unless we need to free up some salary space. And then we got Austin Meadows who develops quite nicely as well. So he'll be a, you know, a outfield rotation, like in our rotation for the outfield. <clears throat> so, Fam, Kiermaier, Austin Meadows, we're doing pretty good. Carlos Gomez is going to be a player who I'm going to be looking to move. Um, he doesn't have much trade value because he's kind of older. Um, but he's he's a player I'm going to be moving and let Malik Smith develop. He's got A potential. He's young. He's got speed. His arm does his arm does suck. It is 25, but I feel like uh, he's okay in right field for now. Um, so he'll, he'll be our starting right fielder. So like I said, first season... Probably going to be pretty tough. Trade number one that we're making was that catcher I was talking about. With Wilson Ramos going to the Phillies, hey, maybe take their catcher that kind of got overtaken from Wilson Ramos. That's Jorge Alfaro. Really good defensively. Could be a little bit better, but he de develops quite nicely. He's 24, 72 overall. Looks to be a really good addition for our squad. Next up, we need a new closing pitcher because I do want to move on from Sergio Romo. And that's going to be this rookie player that's really developed nicely for the Phillies this year in Sir Anthony Dominguez. Looks to be a phenomenal player. And I think that um, for our new closing role, he's going to do the job just fine. And the final player we're going to be picking up is kind of that fourth or fifth starter. is going to be Vince Velasquez. 78 overall, 25 B potential. He should develop quite nicely and help us out in the back end of our rotation. So... With that being said, we do have to give up a little bit. Um, we are getting rid of Carlos Gomos, who I said I wanted to get rid of. We're getting rid of Daniel Robertson, who I said was probably going to be one of those trade bait players. And then, this is kind of the big one. We do have to get rid of an A potential starter. But in return, we're getting three players who are going to help us out right away. One is a catcher that we need to fill that gap. Um, fill that hole that we have from trading away Wilson Ramos. The next one is a closing pitcher who we're going to need once we trade away Sergio Romo. And then starting pitching, we need a fourth or fifth, you know, starter. Actually, Vince Velasquez is 78. He's going to jump up to our second or third starter. So right away, that helps our rotation out so much. So for three immediate impact players, I'm perfectly fine getting rid of a player who is what 18 20 and 63 overall when we still have two a prospects right here and then we have um honeywell as well and de Leon. so we still have four potent a potential players ahead of him so i'm perfectly fine making this trade next trade we're doing is again um adding some more pitching so with that being said we're adding joe jimenez and daniel norris daniel norris will be one of those long relief pitchers he got 78 stamina and he's a lefty so that helps us out a lot we're also adding the um like one of the Tigers pitchers who's really come up and developed a name for himself in Joe Jimenez, the all-star actually this year, 23 over or 23 years old, 80 overall, looks to be really good. He can be our setup, um, setup pitcher for us. And we're adding two arms that should definitely help us right away. With that being said, we're getting rid of Jalen Beeks, 24 years old, B potential and 67 overall. Along with that, we're getting rid of that player that I did want to get rid of in Sergio Romo and first base. Nathaniel Lowe. To start the season, this is how we're going to line up. You can see Kiermaier, Adamas, Duffy, Crone, Bowers, Pham, Malik Smith, Wendell, and Alfaro. On the bench, we got Arroyo, Ref Schneider, Sucre, and G-Man Choi. For the pitching rotation, we're looking okay. Snell, Faria, Velasquez, Glasnow, and Yarborough. Chirinos, Norris, Nuno, Rowe, Alvarado, Jimenez, and Sir Anthony Dominguez. Um, I might take out one of our bench bats and then bring up another pitcher but for right now i think we're okay so that's going to be how we're starting season one i want this to be pretty quick i know it's probably going to be about 10 12 minutes for the first season just because of the intro but it should go by pretty quick so let's get to draft day and i'll catch you guys once we get there all righty it's draft day let's get this started i think we have the 17th pick 16th pick so let's get our first player and i'll show you guys once we get him we're gonna go with ray Bigay out of south dakota got some good contact numbers and also some power numbers arm strength speed and stealing looks decent as well so we're gonna go with the right fielder ray begay we're gonna go with morris hilton just because he's got a decent little pitch selection he's got some break velocity control and home runs per nine looks to be a decent little closing pitcher round two we're gonna go with christopher herndon yeah herndon Her herndon what whatever his name is he bats he's a lefty bat righty shortstop 
good contact versus righties, good fielding, good speed and stealing. So I feel like this shortstop could be a decent little prospect for the future. We're going with Jackie Sheehan here. Um, I'll put his stats up. Though. Pretty pretty decent looking stats. Obviously, I don't have him dra uh, scouted, so it could be horrible. But these guys' stats looks pretty good, though. So you know what? I'm going to take Rick McCormick. And if Valencia sneaks by for one more round, I'll pick. Oh, he just got picked by the White Sox. Alrighty, I'm going to take a chance on Reed Stocker. I normally don't like to take chances on 70 overall um, prospects, but let's do it. Last pick of the draft. Who are we going to go with? Kenny Blake? It's actually got some really nice projections. That's uh, that's pretty tempting, actually. You know what? Kenny Blake will take the chance. Alrighty, draft picks. Actually, pretty solid. Let me move myself out of the way of the overall and stuff. You can see 68 overall for our first over or like our first round pick in Ray Begay. 68 overall. He's got some really nice stats already, and he's got 88 potential. And I didn't realize this before, but he's a switch hitter, so that actually helps out a lot. His arm strength's already pretty high, and his contact versus righties. Morris Hilton, 60 overall. He's got a 90 potential, so that was a good pick as well. Um, the shortstop that I thought would be a little bit better, mm, 79 potential. I mean, it's not horrible. Um, Jackie Sheehan. We'll give him a contract, but he doesn't look to be amazing. Rick McCormick, 86 overall, or 86 potential, 58 overall. Um, Reed Stocker, 77 potential with a 61 overall. And then we got Kenny Blake with a 65 overall and a 79 potential. So, first two picks look really good. Rick McCormick looks to be pretty good for the future. And then we got a couple high 70s, which aren't too bad. They're pretty good for um, just stack like just having some bench bats or some bullpen arms or just having some trade um trade pieces so that's it for the first season we're simming straight through to the end of the year so let's do it real quick as you can see you know the season finished about where i finished uh, i expected you know 77 and 85 not a horrible first year but um about where i you know figured we would finish let's look at the standings we finished 27 games out of east and then wild card, we were 11. If you guys want to see any of the standings, you guys can go ahead and pause it. You can see how every team finished the year. So, again, like I said, I mean, we're in a tough division. We have the Yankees, the Red Sox. I mean, the Blue Jays can be decent. Orioles are pretty bad. But, like, we're, we, we basically have to fight the Yankees and the Red Sox constantly. So, um, not, not, not a horrible year, but about where I expected us to be. We can see that, you know, Blake Snell, 12 and 11 on the year, but he's up to an 89. So that's that's really good to see that he's developing very, very quickly. A three ERA two is very good in today's baseball. So um, that's really good. Jacob Faria, he's up to an 80. So he's developing, not an amazing season, but like a three nine ERA. I mean, it's about a four or five starter, um, which I mean, isn't horrible. Vince Velasquez, he's a 78. Um, his stamina went down one. I didn't realize his stamina was that low, but overall 12 and 13 He had a 3.6 ERA not a horrible year 9 and 6 for Tyler Glass now um, At 3.18 ERA. So again, not a horrible year. You can see his stats there and then um, Ryan Yarbrough was hurt for a little bit, but um, a 3.8 ERA So most of these players are about where I would expect them I mean, they're rated at about, you know, a four or five starting t um, pitcher spot for like a really good team um, I'd say like low 80s or high low 80s high 70s are like that four or five spot in the rotation So these are guys are about performing where I would expect them to be and then Blake Snell is about where I would want him to be Really good um, ace for us right now I mean wins and loss record isn't gonna be a phenomenal just because we, we didn't win that many games and we finished under 500 So I don't expect them to have winning records um, Yoni Chirinos not a bad year. He's up to a 74. I mean he pitched 160 innings um, so, I mean, he pitched a lot. Um, Daniel Norris, again, another arm that pitched a lot of innings. Um, and he had a solid year, 3-2-3 ERA. Um, he did go down in potential, which is a little bit um, disappointing to see. But it was because he had a, a, a pretty lengthy injury. I think he was out two to three months um, for a fracture. So, Vidal Nuno, at 30 years old, not a bad season. 60 um, innings pitched, just under a three or just just about a 3-5 ERA. Jose Alvarado's up to an almost an 80, which is great. You know, he's got he's a lefty. He pitched about 36 innings, had a really good ERA, so he had a phenomenal year. Um, Austin Pruitt, I brought him up because um, Chaz Rowe was doing pretty poorly. He had a, he's up to a 70, and he was like a low 60s to start the year. So he's he's having a pretty good year. Joe Jimenez is an 82, up from an 80. 
he had a three ERA with a, a decent year. I mean, um, holds 31 holds, and then Sir Anthony Dominguez, um, he's gone up one rating, I think, from the start of the year. Um, he had 43 saves. How many blown saves? Seven blown saves. But again, we're a team that, you know, probably lost a lot. We, we did lose a decent amount of games, so I wasn't expecting pitching or a lot of crazy good years out of our team. Malik Smith is up to a 74, so he went up quite a bit this year. Um, five ratings. Uh, he had 21 stolen bases. He hit 260, 337 on base percentage, but a, a good growth for the first season. Kiermaier's in 89, so he's, he's still going up. So he's kind of like that franchise piece for us, I guess. Um, not necessarily a big name, but a decent year. Matt Duffy stayed at that 77 mark, even though it says he's going up. He had a pretty decent year. CJ Crone for D DH, a pretty good year. 23 homers, 88 ribbies, 262. What was his on-base percentage? 314, not horrible. Jake Bowers only went up one rating, but you can see his stats are going up as well. So for the future, we're set, you know, 350 on base percentage, 270 average, not too bad. Alfaro went up six ratings. You can see his stats are going up. He had an okay year, 300 on base percentage, 245, not bad. Wendell stayed about the same. He's going up and down. So it might be time to find a new second baseman. Not the hottest of years. Tommy Pham's in 83. He was another player who got hurt pretty for a pretty lengthy time, a couple months. But I mean, his season, not too bad for our left fielder. And then Willie Adamas, he's up to a 75. So he went up a few ratings as well. And he had a, a decent year. Christian Arroyo had a rough year at the plate, but he went up a couple ratings, which is good to see. Rob Schneider was kind of that backup outfielder for us. Uh, Jesus Sucre, not a bad year, 313 and 100 at bats. And G-Man Choi, 224 and uh, about 100 at bats too. So overall, not a horrible year. Like I said, I wasn't expecting much. Let's quickly look at some of the prospects that we do have. Jose De Leon's up to a 71, um, which isn't which isn't bad at all. Brent Honeywell's up to a 71. Hunter Woods a 70. 69 for Lee Tour. Um, Banda's a 68. Brendan McKay's a 68. So the pitching prospects are developing quite nicely. Um, let's see who else we had. The catcher, okay, not too worried about that. Um, oh, Franco's up to a 64. That's good to see. Jesus, Jesus Sanchez or Jesus Sanchez is up to a 64. He probably should have been in AAA, so I need to remember that for next season. Austin Meadows is a 74. Um, he's he's actually developing pretty nicely. He might be ready for the majors next year. So overall, pretty solid season. Let's sim through the rest of the playoffs. You guys can see how everything's lined up there with the bracket. We're gonna see who wins the World Series really quickly. Oh, it's a three. It's a game seven. Indians versus Nationals, and the Indians are bringing home the World Series title. So let's see what the Braves want to offer me. Mm, good looking prospect, actually. But we need Alvarado. He's one of our better relievers. So let's move straight into the off season. Like I said, we we'll probably only pick up one or two pieces. Um, mostly want to retain players that we're losing. Um, like you see, we don't have any. We don't have any free agents. And uh, so let's just sim to free agency and see what we have to do here. 40 man roster, I definitely need to add Jose De Leon. Um, I don't want him to go. He's a good prospect to have. Salary arbitration, I'll tell you who I'm going to do right away. Fam, Duff, Duffy, yes. So Fam, Duffy, Smith, um, Sucre will get it as our backup catcher. Um, the ones that won't get it are going to be Chazro. He'll be the only one that doesn't get arbitration. Alrighty, so contracts we offered 26 million over four years for Snell. Jimenez got a million for two years. Sir Anthony Dominguez got 900,000 for two years. Alfaro, 1.5 million for two years. Fario, 1.2 million for two years. Alvarado, a mil for two years. Adamas, three mil for two years. Glasnow, a mil for two years. Velasquez, 11 million for four years. Bowers got one. Wendell got an offer, and so did Meadows. Honeywell's being brought back. Yarbrough, Chirinos. Um, De Leon, Arroyo, Pruitt, who actually came in and did a decent job, um, and then Libertor and Hunter Wood are the big ones. There's one more. Oh, Brendan McKay, and then um, Banda, and then Franco, the shortstop prospect. Looking at free agency, um, when I look at the lineup, we said we needed a new second baseman, um, and then I need probably that fifth starter spot. So at the beginning of the season, I've been uh, just kind of scouting the free agency, if there's any young players that have decent potential. And I was looking through them, 
um, and I didn't really see anybody but then I turned to what position was it uh, where is he shortstop and there's this herb newbie I don't I don't know where he came from 72 overall 19 year old with a potential um, we're gonna we're gonna sign him up like there's no reason not to um, let's see where he um where he went to he should have went to the yeah he should go to triple a but like that's that's a nice little pick up there so don't don't be scared to go to your free agency um just look at free agency every season so looking at how we're gonna line up this year we got um snell velasquez faria glasnow and de leon probably okay with the starters for now but we need at least one more bullpen arm you can see we still don't really have too many reliable arms in the bullpen so we're definitely going to need at least one more arm um, there but overall the lineups looking good smith kiermeyer duffy fam bowers crone alfaro wendell and uh, adamas i do want a new second baseman wendell didn't really perform that well last year so the trade we're going to be making is brandon low g man Choi, and che hugh che way hugh um all players about in their 60s um overall wise and potential they're all c's um, we're bringing in Alex Colomb. He is 30 years old, um, but I think for a season or two, he definitely should help us out. Um, looks looks really good. Um, had a really good year last year. And um, the other player I was thinking about getting was um, Kelvin Herrera, a player that we thought about trying to sign throughout the year. So it's one of those where it's like either one is probably really good, um, but I feel like getting Alex Colomb is a little bit better. So we're going to go with him um it get we're getting rid of players that i never was going to use anyways so that and that actually helps out because we did need the um the arm so again it, it i think it's i think it's a really good move for us we can move jimenez into the bullpen now and our our lineup's looking a little bit better Alrighty, so the trade we're going to be making is something that i totally forgot he moved to second was travis shaw who with this trade actually works out because i'm going to move travis shaw to third and then i'm going to move um Matt Duffy back to second because he can play that position. So with that being said, it adds a little bit more power to our lineup as well, at least against um, righties. But we're going to move Travis Shaw to third, Matt Duffy to second. We are getting rid of that player that I was looking to replace in Joey Wendell and then um, a right fielder in Garrett Whitley and then a pitcher in um hunter wood who's b potential and he is one of our higher rated starting pitchers but you can see we have three top 50 prospects four actually at the pit uh, the starting pitching position so i think i think we're set for starting pitchers anyway so for this trade i'm okay with it we're giving getting rid of 270 players but 70 overall players but um that allows us to use travis that actually allows us to bring in travis shaw now so he'll play um third like i said and i'll just show you guys the lineup now and then i'll make the changes as we go so with the change of shaw to third and duffy to second this is how we're going to line up for the year um smith kiermeyer fam shaw bowers crone alfaro duffy and adamas the benches arroyo meadows and sucre looks to be pretty solid our pitching rotation currently looks like this snell velasquez faria glasnow and jose de leon bullpen looks a lot better with the addition of cologne so i'm liking the team we added a couple pieces like i said we would let's hop into the season i'm letting the cpu handle the drafting like i usually do for season two and um i think right now we're just gonna go straight to the deadline day see how it goes at the deadline day you can see we're only eight and a half games out of first place behind the yankees and the red sox in the wild card we're a half game out so we're actually we're doing pretty good um draft pick wise the cpu did pretty poorly there's only one that's really um any mention alex jacques so uh didn't go too great there but let's look at how everyone's performing blake snell's having a phenomenal year 13 and 3 284 era um velasquez seven and six with a five era so he's kind of he's kind of having a tough year um not a lot of innings compared uh not not too far off in innings um farias eight and six um 4.97 era glasnow nine and two okay with a um 2.71 era and de leon he's having a rough year um but you know what do you expect for your like your first full year um 
Norris is okay. Chirinos is hurt right now, but he's having a pretty good year. Alvarado's having a good year. Pruitt's actually having a pretty good year as well. Jimenez, not so good. Sir Anthony Dominguez seems to be in the setup role now, but he looks like he's doing an okay, okay job. And then Cologne here. I don't, I don't know about you in the, uh, the clo the the closer role. Let's see how many blown saves. Four blown saves. How many did Dominguez have? Four as well. Hmm maybe like this for the the future see how that goes as you can see the lineups changed a little bit malik smith is hitting 300 but he's out of the lineup don't don't really understand that one um arroyo's up to a 74 and sucre is up to a 75 okay meadows is a 78 so that i mean that's probably why he's starting over malik smith kiermeyer's an 89 tommy fam's a 91 travis shaw's an 84 um, hitting 276. Bowers is a 76. Crone is a 76. Um, Alfaro's almost an 80. Um, Duffy's an 83. Okay. And Adamus is a 77. So, like I said, a lot of development this year. Alrighty. So, we made the postseason as a wild card team, finishing 91 and 71. We're playing the Red Sox. So, um, yeah, we definitely want to stop um, the season. Let's see who we finish with the league leaders. Blake Snell. Finished with win percentage. Um, and then the awards. Alfaro and Kiermeyer got gold gloves. Okay, okay, let's look at the rotation. Blake Sell, 19 and 5 with a 2-8 ERA. He's a 92 overall. Like I said, like big comparison. You can see ERA is down, win percentage is up, and it's definitely because the team is starting to develop now. So you can see we're we're looking good. Um Glasnow, 12 and 5 with a 2.85 ERA. Ooh. Vince Velasquez, a, a little bit of a rough year compared to last year, but again, not too bad. Um, you know, maybe he drops down to like the third spot or something like that. Jacob Faria, 13 and 9, with just under a 5 ERA. And Jose De Leon is it okay. You know, I wasn't expecting too much from him this season. Daniel Norris is up to a 78. He had a pretty good year, pretty comparable to last year as well. Yoni Chirinos is like something happened with him he got a really good win and loss percentage um era is good so he's developing jose alvarado's up to an 80 which is great to see um era is a little higher than last year similar walks k's and innings pitched but um just era is a little bit higher austin pruitt's still going up as well um he pitched a little less than last year but his era was down a lot um joe jimenez his era definitely went up um he pitched some more but similar walk and strikeout numbers um, Sir Anthony Dominguez was moved to the kind of like the setup role, um, which worked out because Cologne came in and looks like he did a lot better than what um, he was doing in the middle relief. In the middle relief, he hit his rating was down to like an 80. So, it, I mean, I think it, it worked out better that way. Um, Austin Meadows is a 78 overall. He looks like he had a decent year, 255 um, average, 333 on base percentage. Kiermaier is a 90. Fam is an 89. He's hitting 300. Uh, Travis Shaw added the power that we needed. You know, 24 homers, not too bad. RBI is down a little bit, but 280 average, 362 on base percentage. Jake Bowers, pretty solid year. He's almost an 80 as well. Crone is a 76. Alfaro's almost an 80. Batting average took a little dip from last year, but that's okay. Um, Matt Duffy is an 83, and Adamus is an 81 overall. Arroyo's a 75. Malik Smith is a 74, and Sucre is a 74. So pretty good year um, in terms of development. Definitely what I was looking for. Let's look at these pitching prospects now. Banda's a 74, Honeywell's a 74, Moore's a 73, Libertor is a 72, Yarbrough might be traded. Um, just because we have all these other prospects that we can look at. Um, Morris Hilton's a 65. Um, who is the other ones? Herb Newby. Like, holy cow. He will definitely be in the majors next year. Like, he's coming back. Uh, Franco's a 66, which is great to see. Um, Victor, Victor Mesa, he's a 65. Josh Lowe is... Um, 63 and then Ray Begay is a 72 so he might he might be in the majors too so we kind of have a little bit of a outfield congestion you know we got Malik Smith we got Ray Begay we got Meadows Kiermaier and Pham so maybe trade one of those for a really good pitcher um we got a nice little backup shortstop and Herb and newbie the team's looking good let's go into this um this one game playoff game 
versus the Red Sox and see how it goes. If we lose, I'm perfectly okay with that. Like I said, this was probably going to be a wild card team this second season. And season three, I definitely can see us being a really good team. I'm expecting Adamas to be in the 80s, um, Bauer high 70s, Meadows high 70s. This team is going to look really, really good. You can see the Red Sox on the right hand side. In right field, in the four spot, they have bets. DHing, I think it's Nicholas Castellanos. Um, first base is Mitch Moreland. And then the rest of the names you can see. I'm, I'm feeling good, you know, like I feel like we've set this team up for a very good future. Not a great way to start the game though. So, um, down two to nothing, but that's okay. That's okay. Like I said, if we lose this game, that's perfectly fine. I'm really focused on season three going forward. Come on, Snell. There we go. Adamus flies out. Fam, Shaw. Mm. That might be it. That might be it. Who are we facing here? Bogarts is a righty. Uh, let's go Chirinos. Double play. I'll, I'll take. I'll take a double play there. Single. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting something. Now we're getting something. A walk. Bases loaded. Sack fly. We're bringing a run. We're down by two. Okay. I'll take that. And then we get out of that inning too. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I'm feeling good there. Gets out of the inning. Jake Bowers, singles. Duffy, fielder's choice. Meadows, singles. Okay, Alfaro. Bring in the run. Come on, bring in a run. Mm, unfortunately. Can Chirinos give me one more? Mm. Double, though, to lead off the inning. Then we bring... Oh, he's thrown out at home. Eighth inning. Chirinos has still got some pretty good stamina, so we're going to let him go. All comes down to this. Can we do it? it it's okay it's okay like i said i wasn't too optimistic and you know i feel like season three is really our season the yankees defeat the dodgers in the 2019 world series um let's just let's do it we're we're, we're going for we're, we're going all out season three for sure for arbitration the only one that didn't get it was vidal nuno already contracts you can see everyone that you know basically everybody got one um, these were the big ones up here, as well as um, Jesus Sanchez, Vidal Brugin, um, Wander Franco. So those were the big ones. Some I quickly went through free agency and saw that our shortstop, Willie Adamas, was in free agency. So I offered him a contract. I'm going to watch that because I don't want him to leave. Alrighty, so Willie Adamas luckily re-signed with us. Um, so that's that's good for us. Alrighty, so we are in need of some more pitching help, and um, like I said, I mean, we go from 90 to 80, and that's a big drop, and with that being said, to start Season 3, we're going after a new ace in Jacob deGrom. With that being said, we are getting, we're, we're giving up quite a bit um, in terms of prospects. Jose De Leon, who, I mean, he's he had a rough last year. Um, and we have like Honeywell still and Libertor and Banda who are still coming up pretty quickly. And we're also getting rid of one of those shortstop prospects in Wander Franco. But we do have Herb Newby who's like just came out of nowhere and is really, really good. So I'm okay with that. Um, so we're getting rid of those two prospects for Jacob deGrom. Had a rough year last year, but like he still had really good numbers. Um, a player we also could go for was Noah Syndergaard, um, which I mean, his numbers are very, very similar. So, um, I'm going to go with DeGrom. Actually, no. I'm going to go. What would you guys do? DeGrom or Syndergaard? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to go. I'll go Syndergaard. Ugh, do I want to do that? You know what? I'll go Syndergaard. And that final decision, Syndergaard for those two players. And we just added a really good arm so with the addition of Noah Syndergaard you can see the lineup is looking a little bit better um we are gonna leave Yarbrough here we're gonna give him a shot and then I moved Velasquez to a long relief role I'm gonna see how he does there um he doesn't have the best of stamina so that's why I'm kind of thinking maybe in this spot he'll flourish and that means we can move Yoni Chirinos who had a phenomenal year last year into kind of like a middle relief role who could definitely help the development um the bullpen's looking decent we could probably use another arm lineup looks amazing um herb newbies up 
Um, Meadows is still here. Arroyo is still here. So the lineup's looking really good. And I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing this year. I definitely think we can cause a lot of damage. So I think that might be it for us. Like, as you can see at the deadline, we're, we're, this is a pretty tough division. We're nine and a half games out. Um, and then the wild card, we're three games out. So draft picks wise, we got one decent one and Felipe Calderon. Other than that, nothing too special. Man, let's see where what's going on. Snell's having a pretty rough year. Syndergaard's doing pretty good. Glass now, okay. Yarbrough and Faria in the bullpen. You can see these two are doing pretty good. Alvarado's doing good. Colom is not doing good. Okay. Every everybody else is doing good, but Colom not so much. The lineup. Ooh, Tommy fans dropped a lot. Hmm. Pretty pretty rough year at 229. Um, Duffy's okay, Crohn's okay, Bowers up to an 81, Meadows, Alfaro's having a rough year, and so is Adamas. I'm not too sure why this trade works. I'm not too sure why this trade works out at all, but we're getting rid of Keon Wong, Velasquez, and then the starting pitcher, Kenny Blake, and we're getting Keon Kayla. I, I don't understand why this is working. But we're getting rid of 3C potential players for an 89 overall relief pitcher from the Pirates. I'm, I, I, I don't know why that trade works. None of those players have high trade value. So there's that. All right, a trade we're making at the deadline. The second trade we are making is Dylan Bundy is going to be joining us in Tampa Bay. You can see his stats. He's at 89 overall. He looks really, really, really good. Um, we're getting rid of Michael Perez. That means Jace, uh, Jesus Sucre is going to be coming up. Um, next up is going to be Rob Refschneider, and then the pitcher who I was looking to deal in Ryan Yarborough. Just, just not really clicking this year, and this will really strengthen our starting rotation. So that's the trade, the second trade we're making. Alrighty. So after thinking about it, I feel like we need another pitcher. Um, so we're gonna do it. Kevin Gosman, again, another really good-looking starting pitcher, is gonna join us for Nick Solak. Um, another one of our starting pitchers and Jacob Faria who yeah, he's developing but I just I don't know if I can trust him I, I Just don't know and then we're getting rid of um, Alex Colomb who's just not having a good year and he's decreasing in um, Overall so with that I think we're finally set now like the lineup is gonna continue to develop and as long as we stay healthy I think we're good as long as we can stay healthy. I really do think we're set um I just yeah I feel like once we get the once we get the lineups like starting to develop we'll be really good and we stay healthy we'll be really good um, with the addition of Gosman now I think we'll be really good like the starting rotation will be really strong he'll he'll continue to develop and then this this lineup looks really good like I'm, I'm feeling good now I'm feeling really really good after the trade deadline let's uh Let's get let's get us some wins. Let's get us in this playoffs and uh, let's win a World Series. Well, it was a little bit of a grind, but as you can see, we finished in a wild card spot, and again, we are taking on the Red Sox. So, let's see how the season finished. Just three games out of first place, and we got the second wild card spot. Let's see how the team finished pitching rotation wise. Blake Snell had a really rough second half of the season, but he still finished with a 3.75 ERA which isn't horrible pretty similar stats except for a lot more strikeouts he's a 95 overall Noah Syndergaard finished 12 and 4 but a really good ERA so I can't really complain about that Dylan Bundy came in pitched pretty well Gosman came in still pitching pretty well and then Glasnow pitched pretty well so he looks to be a pretty good piece for us going forward Daniel Norris is an 81 which is great to see I'm actually covering the stats let me move myself over here um, Vince Velasquez actually did pretty good in this role and he's up to an 82 which is great Alvarado is a 83 he had a 2 ERA almost that's really good he only pitched 40 innings but he still pitched pretty well Yoni Chirinas man he's looking really good Joe Jimenez is looking really good as well um, Sir Anthony Dominguez moved to the setup role and he looks to be performing well there and Keone Kayla is doing pretty solid there as well as you can see the lineup we are all 80s excluding the bench but Malik Smith is almost at 80 so that's great to see so look at the team Kier Myers a 93 he hit 315 on the year 
really big boost from the season prior. Um, some more stolen bases. His on base percentage went up 0 0.04, which is really nice. Austin Meadows is an 80. He went up to a 282 average. Hit one more homer, a little less RBIs, a couple more stolen bases. He had a really good year. Duffy's around that 81 mark still. A little bit down from last year, but added some more power and ribbies. Christian Arroyo is now the DH. And you can see his, his average went up a little bit, but um, nothing too crazy. Bowers is an 83. He went... He, he did similar RBIs, but he added seven more homers, and his on-base percentage was about the same. Tommy Pham's an 85, and he just he just had a rough year this year. Willie Adamas is an 80 overall. Um, he had a little bit down year in terms of average and on-base percentage. Alfaro, pretty similar to prior year before, and Herb Newby is the new third baseman because um, Travis Shaw is actually hurt, and he is an 80, and he had a pretty good year this season. Um, but like I said, um, on the disabled list is Travis Shaw before he was, he was hurt for a couple months now, but before he got hurt, he was having a pretty decent year in terms of home runs and stuff like that. Um, so he had similar numbers and he still had a hundred, almost 200 at bats less. So overall teams performing pretty good. I feel confident. Um, even though like wins and losses aren't there for some pitchers, um, I feel like we're set up for some good stuff. You know, like this team is looking pretty solid. I'm, I'm feeling confident. So let's get into these playoffs. You can see the bracket there. Um, let's win a World Series for Tampa. Alrighty, it is a elimination game, a repeat of last year. So let's see if we get the dub this time. Snell versus Sale. You can see the lineup. They have Bo Bichette, um, Jorge Polanco, JD Martinez, Mookie Betts, Devers, um, Davis, I think that is at first. Travis at second, Rusny Castillo, and Blake Swihart or Swihart. Um, I'm feeling good. I feel like this is our year. Good walk to start, you know, to get that get that runner on. Can we get the run? He strikes out. But we do they do go one, two, three. Again, we get a little single, but nothing comes of it. So far, we do have two hits. Austin Meadows again gets on base. Ground out and Arroyo strike. We were doing so well. Double to start the inning. Come on, we got to take advantage of this. We can't. Man. Fifth inning here. Come on. There we go. It's like we're getting these runners. We're just not taking advantage of them. We got to we gotta start taking advantage of the runners. One out. Newbie walks. Okay. Alfaro singles. Adamus, it's your time. Fielder's choice. Bases loaded. Two runs score Austin Meadows, you are the man. Come on, Snell, just hold on to this lead. We are looking good now. Single, fam, you're not doing too good lately, but can you can you get something going? Strikes out. Bauer strikes out, and Newbie gets out. J.D. Martinez versus Snell. Mm. I feel like that's it for Snell. I feel like it's time to take him out. We're in the, the seventh. Double play, just what we needed, and we get out of that one. Alfaro strikes out to start the inning. Adamas singles. Kiermaier, double play. Pitching change. Dominguez time. There we go. One, two, three inning. Little two-out rally here. Unfortunately, it isn't, which means Kalo's coming in to close it out. There we go. Two to one victory. Snell, three hits over six innings. And that's a that's a good game to win. We are moving forward and taking on the Indians. Okay, this is gonna be a really good series. Let's do it. I we can't we can't lose. We gotta we gotta go to the World Series now. Alrighty, Kluber Syndergaard game one, and we take the seven to four victory. Carrasco Bundy six to one victory. This is for advancing further into the playoffs, and we sweep the Indians and taking on the Yankees. In the ALCS, I am going to rotate the pitching. Alrighty, just so you guys can see the Yankees team, they have Severino, Jordan Montgomery, um, Masahiro Tanaka, Justice Sheffield, and Chance Adams as their starters. In the lineup, they got Glaber Torres, who's at 99, Clint Frazier, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Josh Donaldson, Hunter Renfro, Gary Sanchez, Greg Bird, and Nico Goodrum. So. They got some pretty high rated players there. Um, we are going to sim until elimination. We got to get past these Yankees. So let's see if we can do it. First game we lose 2-1. to one. Oh man. 
Alrighty, next game, we do take a 6-1 victory. And Travis Shaw does come back, but I haven't figured out that thing with the roster yet. So 2-1 to one lead in the series. 2-2. Two to 3-2. Two. To two. If we win this, we move to the World Series. It is the elimination game. All right. Let's do this. We're going to sim it. So game seven of the series, we are playing in New York. We're going to let Syndergaard take the mound. You can see the lineup here. Looking good. Looking good for sure. Um, we'll, we got to win this. We can't get knocked out now. All right. We get a little two out single there. Another one. And we get the first run of the game. Turn a double play there. Perfect for us. Austin Meadows. Can we get another three to nothing? Okay, that's good to see. Great start for us. Adamus, Alfaro, and Nubi go one, two, three. Okay, come on, Syndergaard. There we go. Kiermaier, Meadows. Dude, Meadows is having a post season for sure. And then um, nothing comes of that. But let's see if Syndergaard can at least give me one more inning. That's good to see. Fam strikes out Adamus flies out and then a walk but nothing comes of that so let's see can Syndergaard go six he does go six strong innings there and uh, Chapman's on for them solo shot okay I, I should have taken Syndergaard out I was feeling like we needed to take him out and I should have so we're gonna bring in Dominguez here let's see if we can get out of this we do swing all right a royal swinging okay Bowers fam Adamus a walk can we get a can we get an insurance run we can't can Dominguez give me one more run here he does newbie Kiermaier okay okay um Meadows strikes out and Duffy gets okay gets on by an error and that means Kayla's coming in to close it out no way he gets thrown out at home and we're taking on, I think it said the Dodgers, but Syndergaard, one earned run, that's okay. But yeah, the guy got thrown out at home. Great, great, great pitching by Syndergaard. And overall, whew, that was nerve wracking. But like I said, we are gonna be taking on the Dodgers in the World Series. And I'm gonna show you their lineup right away before I, um move my rotation to match theirs so you can see Kershaw's a 99 uh Julio Urias is a 90 um the next pitcher they have um Walker Bueller's an 89 Kenta Maeda's an 86 and Ross Stripling's an 87 then you see like that's that's a ridiculous rotation that is a ridiculous rotation. Um, their lineup is Tolls, Verdugo, Seeger, Bellinger, Puig, Muncy, Rendon, Barnes. First two, not so terrifying. Everybody else, pretty highly rated. So this is going to be a very, very tough World Series. I was kind of hoping maybe the Phillies could do it, but unfortunately they didn't. Snell and Syndergaard aren't full stamina from the previous series. So it's all up to Bundy. Game one, three to one. Yikes. Oh, we're down 0-2. We get the victory there. Get the victory there. 2-2. We are on a high. 3-2. And you know what that means? We are going to sim this game because it could be the last game of the series. Bundy. Urias. Let's do this. Alrighty. Game 6. Bundy's coming in. Unfortunately, we don't have a DH this time. So, we're up 3-2. We got to get this win. Okay, Crone. Okay, okay. Okay. Did that just say triple play? Triple play? Triple play. You got to be kidding me. And then they score. Oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Base is loaded and we get triple play. I can't believe that just happened. Sixth inning now. Okay. I'm over it. We need to win this game. <clears throat> Two nothing. Okay. What is going on? Alright, what do we got here? Hmm. 
there we go we get out of that all right alfaro adamas pinch hit bowers coming in he lines out mm, not good all right lefty 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 alvarado's coming in let's in a run sweet 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 four nothing i think it might just be time for the cpu to take over we lost four to nothing let's go into game seven focus on game seven because that triple play just really killed my mood like i was feeling really good going in the game and then we get a triple play like what we do get a two out double though can't score though all right we get out of that one fam adamas alfaro alfaro that's what i'm talking about and then please gosman kiermeyer kiermeyer brings a run home that's what i'm talking about three nothing yes there we go there we go okay walks all right pops up mm, unfortunate there but we still have the three nothing lead meadows walks all right two out rally here two out rally four to nothing i'm feeling good we're feeling good now Alrighty, fam grounds out adamas alfaro okay that's okay feeling good feeling good yeah 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 no 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 not now not now gosman you're done we need a lefty to come in norris gets us out okay just one run scores i'm cool with that a double to start the inning we're gonna pinch hit we're facing a righty so that means malik smith's gonna come in he strikes out all right first and second one out double play all right lefty mm, don't have a lot of lefties i'm gonna bring in velasquez mm. Mm. not not good chirinos strikes out gets us out of the inning okay four to two game we lead off with the double i like that bowers nothing there fam walks one out okay fly out can't capitalize on that we and then no damage is done there okay eighth inning lead off walk chirinos bunts him over kiermeyer nothing there meadows nothing there all right pitching change dominguez time good one two three inning that's what i like to see duffy strikes out strikes out walks strikes out all right kayla's a little tired but it it's world series you know what i mean single single oh he's thrown out at home sack bunt two outs it's time to enter the game boys time to enter the game you know what it is Alrighty. so just in case something goes bad we're gonna let we're gonna warm up jimenez who's up Corey seager all right second and third two outs nice okay okay good start kayla oh one count i'm actually nervous like one run or one hit scores the runs or yeah one hit scores them because it's like 71 speed on second 81 on third uh, i thought that he oh my god oh my god i thought that was gonna be a home run or a hit yikes Anyways, we won a World Series. Little more nerve-wracking than most, but Game 7, we win a World Series for the Tampa Bay Rays. A I actually like this team a lot. It's not like your superstar team, but it's a young team to build around. It was a lot of fun to build around, and it was just a really good team. Like We added really good pitching with those prospects that we had. We were able to trade those prospects for some really good pitchers. We were able to bring in... Um, who do we who do we actually like bring in from the in oh we brought in travis shaw but he got hurt um we brought we didn't really bring in anybody for the actual like fielders we mostly brought in pitching help and i think that's all that this team needs until you're able to fully develop those prospects like there's honeywell there's banda there's all these really good pitching prospects that you guys have this team has that you can really develop and if you can wait three four five years in a franchise to fully get the that those prospects to like their 80s mid 80s maybe even 90s you're set with pitching you don't have to worry about pitching if you sell trade some of those prospects for some outfield players then you got a really really strong team i mean we made one trade actually i just remembered for the catcher alfaro but outside of that 
this was all focused on a really good race team there's malik smith uh bowers adamas um fam kiermeyer just a really really good team we had we found some other really really good players so let's talk about the team let's look at it and let's just see how this team like this team is just just really really good and like it's just perfect so um yeah let's just let's just look at it like Syndergaard really good pitcher Bundy we traded for gauze like all these players right here we traded for but we had glass now who turned actually turned out to be a really good pitcher we had Snell really good pitcher um, we traded for Norris we traded for Velasquez Alvarado turns into a really really good pitcher Torinos turned into a pretty decent pitcher um, and then the rest of the players we did trade for um, but looking at Honeywell he's a 77 so basically he could be ready next year Banda could be ready next year Libertor could be ready next year McKay ready next year more like there's some good names down there for prospects um and then the players that we were able to bring in, like Christian Arroyo, he's a bench player, but he's an 80. He started at a 69 um, at the beginning of the franchise. We brought in this guy, Herb Newby, from free agency. Great pickup. You know, there's still, um, we traded away Wander Franco, who um, we could probably find him real quick. Um, he's with the Mets. So let's see where he is. Wander Franco's a 71. So if you wait a couple more seasons, he's going to be a really good player um let's let's find our team again tommy fam he had a pretty okay season this season but prior to that you know he had a 307 year year before and the year before that 288 um jesus sanchez 71 who's only 22 years old um austin meadows 80 overall at age of 24 you can sign victor victor mesa in this roster um the osfm v4 he's 23 and 67 and he didn't play a season so he actually downgraded for a season so if you pick him up in free agency right away you could probably get him to a 70 at this year um we sent we uh drafted ray Begay. he's a 75 malik smith he's a 79 so you guys can see you can really really build up this squad and they can be a very very good team and with that being said it's not an expensive team to have because a lot of these players are younger so if you can manage those contracts you're set for the future building this team from the ground up so i hope you guys enjoyed this tampa bay rays um franchise if you did you know what to do hit that like button down below subscribe if you are new and enjoyed the content and again in the pinned comment there's the roster that i used and also the poll for the team that i will be doing for tomorrow's rebuild so let me know down below who you would like me to do for tomorrow's rebuild make sure you go and um, vote in that poll because that's the way that i'm going to see who to do for tomorrow's rebuild as you can see herb newbie world series mvp pretty crazy right and then the playoff mvp was i think it said arroyo or what's what's his name third baseman christian arroyo yeah he was the playoff mvp and he had a 229 average so he performed in the playoffs so again i really like this team i really enjoyed i think this is my favorite rebuild just because it involved a lot of the players that were already in the team and they just have such a good farm system so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content and i'll catch you all in tomorrow's rebuild peace